Hey everyone, the 6.5 is on the road. We are here in Maui, beautiful Maui for the Snapdragon Summit 2024. Excited to be with you all. Have a great conversation today about something that I'm personally very passionate about. Motorsports, automotive, technology, we're bringing it all together. And for this episode, we have a very special guest and a guest that we also find very special that we've had many times before, Don McGuire, CMO of Qualcomm. Hey, Dan. Joining, good to have you back so many Thanks times. And a first timer on the show and someone I'm very excited to meet and have with us, Toto Wolf, uh, CEO, AMG Patronus F1 team, Mercedes. So excited to have you with us. Okay. Thank you, man. Toto, I got to start with you since it's uh, first time on the show. You're here in Maui, Hawaii at the Snapdragon Summit, a technology show. You got PCs, you got phones, and Snapdragon made a bunch of announcements about automotive. What brings you here to Hawaii? Well, um, um, Qualcomm, Snapdragon, and, and Mercedes, we, we, have a, we have a great relationship, obviously, with Don on the, on the marketing side. Uh, we're trying to create experiences that haven't been seen before, and there's uh, so much um, of the mindset that overlaps. We are in a high-tech environment, um, cutting-edge technology. It's, it's, it's about speed, um, and I think what we're already doing on the um, virtual, reality, virtual reality side and the virtual garage and going forward on uh, possibly um, AI solutions uh, is, is amazing. So me being here is just not the courtesy to show up at uh, Don's event, uh, but literally trying to uh, push ahead with our technologies. Yeah, and it's great, Don. I saw uh, the Snapdragon right there on the halo. I was in uh, Austin this weekend at the GP. And of course, you know, you, you always watch the race in sort of two dimensions. There's so much experience stuff going on right, right. now, but you watch it on the track as your driver goes by wherever you are. Right. And then you're watching watching it on the TV because you want to get all the positioning. I bet XR is going to come into play here at some point. But oh, for sure. Don, what, what's the reason, you know, the Qualcomm and, and the Snapdragon wanted to be so connected to such an exciting team? Well, I mean, it's really about from a brand perspective, how do we connect with uh, fans yep. uh, around their passions? Right. So um, and sport happens to be something a lot of people are passionate about. Right. You are especially. Absolutely. Um, uh, so F1 has passionate fans. Um, we have a connection from a technology product perspective with automotive uh, and, our, and our growth in automotive. A lot of automotive innovation starts in F1. Um, and then we get to grow brand affinity through the fandom that F1 has created. So it's just sort of a triangulation of everything that makes sense for us um, and to invest in and to nurture. Uh, and then, of course, it's who do you pick to work with? And that really matters. So we believe, and Toto and I have talked about this in the past, that we have we share brand and cultural sort of um, pillars yeah. that we that overlap quite well, yeah. um, that really sort of make the partnership that much more effective. Uh, and so um, happy to be a partner of, uh, of the Mercedes Formula One team. There's a bit of an ethos. I was in Vegas last year for that first inaugural race and I went over to the experience that you were delivering, uh, you know, that Qualcomm and Snapdragon was doing. And it was, it was really a wonderful experience. Cool first race. I mean, it was odd trying to stay up so late, you know, all of us, you know, you're, you're kind of Vegas. minded through the day, but there's no clocks in Vegas. It was an amazing, <laughs> uh, amazing experience. Can't wait for the second year. Cause you know, it always gets better, you know, as they do these events over and over in different spaces. Toto, you kind of alluded to this in the beginning, you talked about how it's kind of, uh, you know, that what you're doing in F1's at the cutting edge. It's at the leading edge of all things technologically automotive you know talk a little about what you know you're so excited about where is this heading in your in your in your mind you know first of all on las vegas um <laughs> you know we had this um, um a pothole that uh, got undone um everything was delayed i've never had a practice session at four o'clock in the morning and we all headed to the to the hotel when it was bright daylight so that was a bit like a surreal experience but i guess teething te teething problems with a with a grand prix first time and i'm really looking forward to go to las vegas now um you talk about high-tech cutting edge we love the sport because it's so brutally honest the stopwatch never lies <laughs> You know, you can in all other businesses you can come up with uh, explanations why things aren't the way they are. You know, look at politics, how you can uh, how, how how things are being said that are not almost uh, almost uh, that are not very accurate sometimes. And here, you're either fast enough or not, and you can see that on the stopwatch. That means all the innovation we're doing, all the technology development, is for that sole purpose of going faster with the race car and the competition. Yeah, there's a ton of innovation and it's not just like once a year, it's progressive. Every weekend you hear about 
this this team did this set of upgrades and then and by the way this year has been fantastic because there's so much parity you know you go back and forth which has probably been missing a bit over the past few seasons but this year every week it's a different a different team is showing up that's got to have made it a lot more fun this year yeah well i mean there's seven different winners this year um louis and george then science and leclerc then um norris and piastri and then um verstappen so uh, we won three races before the summer. We set the benchmark. Now Mercedes on the roll. We come back in the summer. We are not on the roll anymore uh, because we bought an up, up, uh, upgrade. And these cars are, in a way, so on the edge in terms where they create the downfall through the floor that you can, you know, just a millimeter out of the window and you're not competitive. And that makes it so exciting also. So with all the technology, done, you know, we have this great sport that's right. caught fire the show drive to survive you know one of the stars gotten to know you a little bit through that first time meeting in person which is great but you talked about experience so how does this you know you're you're driving experiences inside vehicles mm -hmm. you got some great announcements here right. uh the snapdragon ride elite platform yeah. you are delivering experiences in xr with wearables i keep thinking at some point these cars need to be going on the track with a pair of glasses on so i can watch both like what yeah, are some of the experiences and immersive. immersive things that you're thinking about with these relationships with f1 and with with with, yeah. with soccer man you you got all this going on yeah it's 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 been fun right we're just getting started i think the virtual garage is a is a great first start um you know toto came to San Diego, did a bunch of demos and product experiences. And then we were talking and he said, I'd like to bring the garage experience to more fans. Um, and so we said, well, we can do that virtually. We can make it immersive. Um, and um, and then we we worked for almost a year on that collectively with the Mercedes team and, and some of our development partners. And then we delivered it in season in the Vegas club, the Miami club, et cetera. And I think um, that's just one step. Um, but there's lots of things we can do to make the fan experience more immersive. And we talked about it at dinner last night. We talked about it over the course of, of, of our, um, our contact throughout the race season. And, uh, and so we're excited about where we can go, yeah. right? Cause we're just, we're just getting started. But, um, but also, um, I'm really happy and really excited about where Formula One is going from a fandom perspective. And, and it's, it's, it, it was once a very exclusive type of experience yep. and it's becoming a more accessible and inclusive type of experience. And that's what excites me as well. Yeah, 400 some odd thousand people in our hometown, my hometown of Austin, uh, as long as you're not trying to get on a flight out of town that night, you know, because the whole city is jammed up. Uh, the fandom is pretty incredible. Uh, you know, by the way, Toto, you are focused on, you know, doing more investing in the sport. F1 Academy, for instance, you've, you've chosen to really get behind that. Talk a little bit about the thinking there and about the investment, what's going on with uh, you and the team and the investment in, in F1 Academy. The sport is on fire because I think um, many um, uh, decisions that have been taken were right. First of all, you mentioned the show that was a big success. Next year, we're going to have the Brad Pitt movie. Uh, that's, I think, going to give it a big push. There is exciting racing, like we discussed before, um, and it's authentic. And and because of that, we have one and a half billion people that are watching our races, 400,000 in, in Austin. And I believe that Austin last year with 430,000 was the single biggest event in the United States last year. So you can you see how far Formula One has come. Uh, in terms of Formula One Academy, uh, it's a great great project that is close to my heart for two reasons. First of all, my wife Susie runs it as a managing director, and I have seen her coming up through the ranks, um, eventually going into Formula One as a test driver and being out on track on a race weekend. Um, but that last step, nobody was actually courageous enough to put her in the car, although the lap times were there. Um, and she decided to pursue the mission to help find the next female Formula One driver. And that's not easy because it starts with grassroots sports in karting. Um, in the past, you would have 100 karters and maybe two girls. Now you have 10. I, I said in an interview, it's 20. And she said, you've got to get your numbers correct. It's 10. We are not yet where we want to be. And Formula One Academy is providing that platform that is highly visible to female racers to showcase what they do. We have Dorian, um, which we are really pushing strong between Snapdragon and Mercedes. Um, and that's eventually going to grow um, a bigger, provide an inspirational platform for young females that want to go into sport. And we as, as Mercedes, we believe we have, we have to be all in on that. No, that's great. As a, as a father of two older daughters, I love for them to want to get into racing. But, uh, that but you know, not... it shouldn't be only the racing in, on the car. I think yeah, diversity no. in the team. 
that's oh, the absolutely that's I what we go out and drive fast i mean yeah he doesn't want that Let, let's pivot a minute to the to the tech and the data we started off talking about the highest performance you know this event is all about data everybody kind of knows that there's a lot going on you've got the row out there of, of engineers looking at data then inside the the inside the garage you got more engineers looking at the data you'll hear the conversations going on between the drivers and sometimes you and the other engineers on the radio telling you what's going on like how much is really going on how much data is there and how much you know can you really react to things in real time uh tons of data and uh, we have 700 sensors on the car and some of the some of the sessions and you got to filter the noise from um, the data that are relevant for that very session or for the development of the car and that's the complication of the sport but it's also what makes it so fascinating yeah it is it is a lot of fun i sometimes hear like you know you hear the drivers kind of either complaining something's not right or you know and then there's always the mix of conversation sometimes you guys come back and be like it's fine, Lewis or George, just keep going. Or then other times you're like, yeah, you know, there's a problem. We're looking at it. It's so fluid. It's so fast. And I mean, it's just miraculous to see because everything from the tire wear to, you know, the the adjustments you make on the wings and in like it's hundredths or even thousands of seconds aggregated over the course of a race that makes a difference between a potential win or even a potential podium um, and not. And so one other thing though is i've seen a lot of efforts around sustainability in the sport right you're cranking out thousands of horsepower but you're trying to do it in a way that's as as sustainable as possible as well how how is the kind of push and pull of getting that done because i mean we've obviously seen electric vehicles can be incredibly powerful um we hear about battery charge all the time like but at the same time i know motorsports people love the horsepower like what's the what's the give and take there you're an old dinosaur. You want to hear the noise, oh, right? That noise. Yeah, 20 Is that okay? That's okay. okay. Uh, fundamentally, it's an it audiovisual like thing. It's like a race without the noise. Yeah, it needs to be. Yeah. Of course, you hear the Carrera Cup that always goes before. Those cars are loud. Loud, yeah. It's audiovisual. You know, you have an electric car that goes 200 miles an hour in front of your eyes and uh, an eight-cylinder that does 100 and 150 miles, and you think the it's much faster than the electric car. So that is still... Um, and that is still a perception thing and the noise is, is needed. But uh, when you speak about Formula One, it's counterintuitive to talk about sustainability, but it is 100% not because we have been always at the forefront of developing solutions for the auto industry. And uh, we have a hybrid engine today uh, with about 20% of, of, of what we have in total power output. And in 2026, we're going to have 50% electric, 50% combustion, but all of that with um, um, biofuel, waste-based biofuel. And as we are going through the energy transition, you know, EVs are not having the traction that we all believe they have because of a lack of infrastructure, et cetera. The Mercedes cars, by the way, the electric are great, but it lacks the infrastructure. So biofuels is what's going to propel the cars for a long time, hybrid um, technology. That's one thing. The other thing is we are having one and a half billion people that are watching us. And we want to demonstrate that our racing cars are going around the track for no reason, actually, just entertainment. We can make this sustainable by showcasing how we travel. We're investing lots of money into sustainable, sustainable aviation fuel. We're fueling our trucks in Europe um, with HVO. We've reduced the emissions on those trucks by 90% using biofuels for our uh, generators. And by sh showing the world is if you are traveling for business, family, visiting friends, or ordering goods that come from China, you want them overnight, so they have to be flown in also. How can you do this with the least amount of emission? We are showing that. And I think that's a responsibility that we have, and we're taking it very seriously. Yeah, the, the pace and speed in which you work in the sport, whether it's the two and a half seconds to what change tires, fuel, all the things that you do is pretty pretty incredible. Uh, you know, you take the cars apart, you see a major crash on qualifying, and on Sunday the car's back in the race. Yeah. You know, you take a car to the shop, Don, it takes two months to get yeah. it back these days. Especially, yeah, especially right now. But it has to... But not a Mercedes workshop. No. Of course not. Of course <laughs> not. The, yeah. the, the, this sounds like a good uh, moment of kind of where the ethos, though, really is similar. I know Qualcomm focuses on being low power. Mm -hmm. uh, you're focusing on, you know, technology for, you know, driver assistant for safety. Uh, of course, trying to create newest PC smartphones. Is this something that you feel is sort of a really good reflection of a sport that believes in and a company that believes in, uh, you know, sustainability? Yeah, I mean, I think um, we've committed to you know, net zero goals, um, uh, just like a lot of uh, big organizations have. Um, and we have committed to reducing power drain 
right? Reducing um, that impact on the on, on climate and, and the environment by 20% year over year. Um, and the good news is, is we know how to do this, right? We know how to master performance at low power. Um, so it's been it's been fun to kind of be that yin and the yang, and then obviously partnering with other organizations that share those 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 goals. It, it broadens your your um, appeal, right? Uh, to from a, from a fan perspective as well, because um, I, so I think what Toto mentioned about sustainability and moving F one uh, and, and and leading by example, um, and, and that in combination with leading by example with the academy, um, uh, makes for a broader um, kind of ecosystem of audience to come in and be part of it. Um, we've leaned in with the academy with with the Mercedes team from a brand perspective, because we really support the goal of the Academy, right? And so we've wrapped ourselves around Dorian um, and with a big blanket. Um, you'll be seeing more of that, a little bit of it tomorrow, sneak peek. Um, and then uh, and then we're really excited about where the Academy is headed. And so uh, we like those aspects of the partnership. It's beyond just the performance and the sport and the cars and Lewis and everybody else. It's all about these other things that make it sort of a full and holistic partnership. Well, Don and Toto, it's been a great time having a conversation. On the way out, Toto, I got one question I just have to ask because every Sunday or that there is a race, I wake up early if it's 3 a.m. or 9 a.m. or I watch it. I've gotten my son into the sport, loves the sport. Which venue is your favorite after all these years? Is there a race that you go to that you're just absolutely like the most excited about, most excited track, most excited event, fans? What is it and where is it? There's so many that provide a, a, a different experience. I love to go to Suzuka because the, the experience in the country, it's also clean, uh, is, is great. The track is a driver's track. I love to go to Spa because also the high speed corners there and it's always raining and it's cold and it's great. That's how it should be in Spa. So every track has his, its kind of DNA. So uh, yeah, I've, I've started to love uh, all of the calendar actually. Yeah, it's been, it's been really interesting to go from race to race yeah. and really notice that that they are unique. Yes. Um, uh, I went to Singapore for the first time this year and everyone's like, you got to go to Singapore, you got to go to Singapore. And it is very unique, right? Um, so it's hard to pick one. Um, you know, Monza has its unique, the, you know, the, the Tofosi and the Italianness. everything is very unique as you go track to track. Monaco, very Monaco, unique. Monaco, very unique. The Vegas, Vegas, small Vegas though. unique. We got to widen that track now so we can get some more passing. <laughs> you know, I've been living there for a long time and every time I drop my son in school, I'm thinking, how can we make this quicker? So uh, track designer there. But the problem is just very close. So we could shave off a few trees, um, but then the FAA is, is scared that we're going too quick. You know, out of the tunnel, we could go in another 500 meters, but you're doing then 200 miles an hour. Well, you, you know, I've, we've all kind of come as fans to understand that the, the race is qualifying in some ways at that, at that yeah. particular track. Yeah. Don, Toto, Thank you both so much. Thank you. Thanks for having us. And thank you everyone out there for tuning into this episode of the 6.5. I know it was a little bit unique, but we brought together technology, motorsports, and a great conversation and a great couple of guests. Subscribe, be part of our community. Join us for all of our episodes. But for this one, it's time to say goodbye. See you all later.